this last intro video, I'm going to just create some more, uh, a more basic test. So I'm going to say describe, and this is going to be length validations. And so I'm going to say do, just to show you another thing you can do. It's pretty neat. Uh, so for this one, I'm going to say it should not allow a name longer than 50 characters. Okay, so now for our test, I'm going to say uh, user dot name and uh, set this equal to uh, we can pick any string. I'm going to say j times 51, uh, and so that's going to give you 51 j characters all right next to each other. So that's going to invalidate what we uh, want the test to be. So uh, now we should be able to expect the user to not be valid. Okay, so let's uh, run this test and bundle exec our spec and see what the test says. This should give us a failure message right here. There we go. So we got one failure. It says user length validation should not allow a name longer than 50 characters. And here is our failure. So this is actually all good. This is the way we wanted it. So now we just have to update our validations in our model and say validates, but instead of presence of, this time I want length of, and I want it to be for the name, and I want to set a maximum of 50 characters. So uh, now let's see if this works. Run the test again. There we go. Everything's working. So this is a uh, this is just a really quick demo on how to get started with RSpec. In the RSpec course, we're actually going to get into building out some pretty complex things, such as uh, integrating Factory Girl, so we can have our factories set up and uh, setting up things like mocks and stubs, and uh, really building an entire application uh, and letting the tests do the development uh, driving for us. So, uh, which is definitely something that you want to get used to when you're building Rails applications. The last thing I want to show you before I let you go is to set this up for documentation mode. So uh, to run the tests, I'm going to run it again just so you can see the difference. Bundle exec RSpec and you can see the format. Everything's kind of all over the place and it's hard to see things and uh, it doesn't really work the way, uh, especially if you have a failure that is, uh, where it's not very explicit. You have these four dots for the four tests and that's really all it is. But one thing that I like to do, and uh, when I'm working with a team of software engineers or anybody that wants to know exactly what kind of behavior the tests are ensuring, if I do dash dash format documentation and hit return, you'll see something very different come out uh, in the output. And this is something that's pretty neat. So uh, if you want to know why I created those describe blocks, you may notice how in the tests I did, there's one main describe block that everything has to go into. And then I have these three describe blocks, one for creation, validations, and length validations. And I could even do other things. And uh, when we get into more complex tests, you could have four or five describe blocks nested into one uh, just to keep everything organized. But you can see that when you do this, it gives you a great format of what your application's actually supposed to do. So you can see that you have creation tests, validation, and length validations. And you can even see in creation, it should have one item created after being created. And it has all of these different items. And so if you're to put this together and you want to, you say you're building this for a client or your employer, you can print this out and give it to them and show them all the different things that your application can do. And the system does this all automatically, which is a very cool feature of our spec. So uh, great job if you went through that course. You definitely have a better understanding of the way our spec works. But this is just an intro validation test 
tests are some of the most basic ones you can do, but they are a good start. And we'll uh, in the next course we'll get into how you can actually build that application all uh, using test-driven development.